This is the 65th anniversary of the Statistical Review. I think it's fair to say it's established itself as a sort of the Bible of energy statistics for our industry over that period of time. And I think it plays two key roles. First, by providing sort of timely, objective data of the past year, it helps us make sense of, of, of the events we've just lived through and, and puts it in a broader context. Secondly, the data, the, the historical data it's collected over a period of time provides a context of where we may be heading. As you know, one of the best ways of knowing where you may be going is having a sense of where you've come from. As always, this year's um, statistical review contains lots of facts and figures and numbers. Perhaps the key highlight coming out of last year's data was the fact that global demand for energy grew relatively slowly by only 1%. That's similar to the growth rate seen last year, but far slower than the growth rate seen over the last 10 years. Within that, however, there's winners and losers. We saw strong growth in oil demand, also in renewable energy, and a bounce back in natural gas from the very weak growth we saw last year. The main casualty was coal, which fell sharply, recording its largest fall on record. So, as you know, oil prices fell sharply last year, and we could see the oil market responding to that. On the demand side, that fall in oil prices stimulated strong demand growth. Oil demanding grew by around 1.9 million barrels a day last year. That's almost twice its 10-year average, so strong demand growth. Also, we saw some bits of supply start to respond to lower prices. Particularly within US tight oil, rigs came down and that started to feed through into lower output and output falls through the second half of last year. So the price sensitive components of the oil market responding to that lower prices. And if that was it, then we would have seen the market move broadly closer into balance um, last year. But that wasn't it. We also saw significant increases in OPEC production, in particularly by both Iraqi production and Saudi Arabia production. As a result of that increase, we saw the increase in total supply last year again outstrip the increase in demand, adding further to the surplus in the oil market. The fastest growing source of energy last year was renewable energy going into power sector, grown by over 15% and led by strong growth in both wind and solar power. And that continued the story that we've been seeing for several years now of fast falls in the cost of wind and solar power driving strong demand growth. China continues to play a key role in shaping the global energy developments. In particular, growth in China's energy demand last year grew at its slowest rate since the late 1990s, i.e. before its rapid process of industrialization. That slower growth was a key component in causing this sort of relatively weak growth we saw in energy demand last year. Natural gas bounced back last year from the very weak growth rates we saw in 2014 related to the mild winter in, in that year. Much of the action was happening in, in the US. On, on the supply side, the US remained the powerhouse for, for global gas production, all of that coming from really continuing strong growth in US shale gas. And on the demand side, that strong growth in US shale gas pushed down gas prices in the US, allowing gas to gain significant shares from coal within the US power sector. Coal fell sharply in 2015, recording its largest decline on record. I think that reflected both factors on both the supply side and the demand side. On the supply side, the main action was in, in the US. Strong growth in US shale gas crowded out coal within the power sector, leading to big falls in coal consumption within the US. And on the demand side, the main driver was what's happening in China. The shift in the structure of the Chinese economy away from the industrial sectors, which tend to be very coal intensive, caused China's coal consumption to fall for its second consecutive year. Those two factors, the supply shifts in, in, on, in the US, the demand adjustments in, in China combined to produce this very stark fall in coal consumption in 2015. 
The estimate of the growth in carbon emissions from energy use in 2015 is really quite striking. The slow growth in energy demand, together with this shift in the fuel mix away from coal towards cleaner, lower carbon fuels, natural gas and renewable energy, means that growth in carbon emissions essentially stalled in 2015. That's the slowest growth rate we've seen for over 25 years, other than the immediate aftermath of the financial crisis. So in summary, looking back at 2015, we saw another year in which the global demand for energy grew relatively slowly. On the supply side, there were some winners and some losers. Oil demand grew strongly, driven by that sharp fall in oil prices. Renewable energy also grew strongly, continuing the, the sharp falls in costs as technology continues to advance. The main loser was coal, which was recorded its largest fall on record. And this slow growth in global energy demand, together with this shift in the fuel mix, means the growth in carbon emissions effectively stalled in 2015.